All right, everyone, say hello to the new Autopilot 136 from Old Town. Oh my gosh, this one has been a while that I've been waiting to take custody of this fella. Thank you, Old Town, so much for gifting the channel with another spectacular kayak. I can't wait to get out there and test it out. But for right now, let's get her loaded up and we're going to do a quick run through. We've got the kayak all rigged up and loaded down the way I would go out there fishing. What I'm going to do first is run through the features of the Autopilot 136 and then we will go into how it is that I have it set up. Alrighty, let's get our things. We'll put this over here. Actually, i just hold on to it. So starting up here at the bow of the kayak, you got a very durable handle. Never have been able to break one of these and it's very tough. What I don't like about it is that it's stationary. It doesn't actually twist and move the way some other kayaks are, and that's just strictly for comfort. Uh, also, it's not in the most like best place on the kayak because whenever you grab it and you lift up, this, the bow of the kayak, tends to jab at your hips and your side, and it's just a very awkward position. It definitely hurts your wrists because the handle does not turn and rotate but uh, it'll last forever. Like I said, never broke one before. Moving back right here, you've got your circular hatch. This isn't something for like storage. So a lot of y'all love your storage and everything else uh, down below the kayak. This isn't what this is designed for mainly. And like my two cents, it's so that you can access the safety switch right over here and also the wiring for a fish finder or any other electronics that you're going to throw down below. Uh, it's got a nice little foam or rubber seal that does not let water in. I have owned another autopilot for five, six months, going on six months now, and no water collects inside there whenever you take swells over the bow and it constantly uh, brushes over the uh, hatch itself like other kayaks water gets down in there this one has done its job so uh, right here you've got two little like recessed areas that are like a half moon that is so that if you want to lean some rods down at a like quick moment's notice or you're going to go under a tree you can pull all your rods from back there and just lay it down so nice thought in doing something like that now we've got the motor itself let this sink in Old Town basically designed a platform around this motor. So this is the heart and soul of the kayak. Minn Kota has done a spectacular job with all the features that is packed into this one unit. And it was only a matter of time before they actually put one on a kayak and did it so seamlessly. Uh, it is perfect. So the motor, a little bit about that. It's a 45 pound thrust and salt water rated. I know the riptides are colored white. However, white's not gonna look good. It'll contrast too bad with the color on the kayak itself. So they just did it in black. But uh, nonetheless, it is salt water rated and uh, it is just super powerful. Strong enough for this prop to churn through <laughs> the marsh mud that I uh, often go out into and uh, so the features that this motor packs in it it's got uh, autopilot so whenever you're using this iPilot remote you hit that little north button with the arrow and whichever way your motor is facing that's where your boat is going to go and if the tide is moving and the wind kind of blows you the motor will recalculate to continue on that line and just keep you going. So while you're doing that, you can do anything else without fear of your boat drifting off course. The other thing is spot lock. Uh, that's the sole reason why I have decided to fish exclusively out of the autopilot kayaks. Spot lock alone is just pure genius. Um, you can use it to anchor yourself, meaning like without an anchor, the unit is GPS enabled right there. And uh, it's gonna hold you, once you hit this anchor button, that's engaging spot lock. You're gonna be locked in that one place, regardless of wind, the current, tides, 
uh, even if you're fighting a big fish and you engage spot lock, the fish can try all it wants to pull you off your spot, but it's not going to happen. The Minn Kota will go to work and all on its lonesome, it's going to just keep you pinned in that one location until you turn it off. So think of, of yourself being out at the jetties, uh, fishing some saltwater rocks, and you don't want to drift into them uh, because that's dangerous and you're fighting a fish and you have to constantly keep sitting down in older kayaks to pedal yourself away or just you know kind of keep your whereabouts as far as where you are so you don't get into any danger spot lock allows you to fight the fish without having to worry about a thing so it is just pure genius once i uh, was able to fight some really massive saltwater fishes um, I was sold and I got rid of my older kayaks and now we're fishing strictly with these. Okay, so let's show y'all how the motor actually mounts and unmounts. This right here is the pull cord. In order to take it off, you take that cord off. That's a spring-loaded mount right there and then you just pull out. So this is your mount right there. Be very careful whenever you're running your hands alongside these edges. These feel sanded down. However, uh, don't like, don't rub your hands on it whenever you're doing the wiring for a fish finder because uh, some of them might be sharp and you could cut your fingers. Don't ask me how I know. So that down there, as I was saying, is a grommet for your uh, wiring on the fish finder. Uh, basically, you got two over here, one on the right, another one on the left. You run your fish finder wiring through there you feed it through over here it comes out and then it goes down this little hole right there and there is a transducer mount over there the mount itself it's spring loaded so that uh, whenever you run aground you're not gonna ruin the motor it'll just basically pop up and it's not gonna break so to mount it you got these little nipples right there on both sides and then up here at the top on both sides, it goes inside that little carriage. There's a little half moon down there. You put the bottom ones in first, and then you just push, and then there it is. It's done, it's mounted. You connect your cable back right there. And then over here on this side, you got a quick disconnect that is right here. You lock it in and you're ready to go. Whenever you want to uh, deploy your trolling motor, you get the pull handle right here. You pull back. There's a cleat right there to lock it down and you're all set. You're ready to go. Now, obviously you're gonna go a lot lower. What happens is there's a magnet under here, which is the safety switch. Once this sits all the way down, this engages the magnet or the magnet is here it engages the safety switch under there and it allows the prop to start turning. Another thing that some of y'all might ask is the trolling motor itself uh, with the prop. Here, let's raise it. What if uh, it's like that whenever you're trying to raise the motor up? Don't worry, the way the plastic is molded, it will turn that prop to, <clears throat> to whichever way it needs to so that it can raise up. All right, now going back to the iPilot remote. If you forget this for some reason at home or you leave it locked in the truck or I mean, I, I don't know what the case might be, but if you forget this, you can also uh, connect your cell phone to this through Bluetooth and you'll still be able to operate your trolling motor through use of Bluetooth and the uh, autopilot uh, app. I don't know if it's autopilot or iPilot but uh, there's an app that you can use to control that. All right, now let's move back a little bit. You got some gear tracks. I think this is like 18 inches or 16, somewhere around there. Don't quote me on it, but it, just know that there's plenty of room on the left and right hand side to mount all your accessories on it. And then the cockpit itself, my gosh, this is by far the biggest area that I have had on a kayak to stand up and fish. You can literally stand up right here and then kind of walk over here to the very uh, front of the kayak. 
fish you can turn around it is super stable uh, so no matter what you're doing you've got a place to uh, stand and fish it's a great platform all these holes right here are the scuppers so if water comes over the gunnels then uh, it's going to drain pretty easy what i'm going to use it for is uh, stakeout poles uh, i'm going to get some like four footers for when i'm inside the marsh and i'll just have them inside here stake them down and that way i can put one two in whatever combination to keep the boat from having a pivot point because if you use one there's a pivot point and the wind will blow you but if you use two you're going to be good but uh, eva foam padding for the cushion and it also helps to dampen the noise now these right here are foot rests they also serve to control your rudder at the rear of the kayak so think of this whenever you control the trolling motor itself and you want to turn left well you use the remote to turn left left arrow means left and then you also full rudder left <laughs> you're literally going to be like a little top spinning on a table this guy gives new meaning to the term turns on a dime i hate using that because everybody uses it and it's basically subjective to whatever platform you're using but this fella literally turns on a dime so uh, foot rests, also rudder control. Um, let's see, what else do we have? That is the rut, I mean the motor deploy, redeploy uh, cord. Let's move back. So over here, y'all can see that I have some tools inside these little pockets behind the foot rests. Uh, that's what I use it for just to store my scissors pliers i mean you can think of anything that can fit inside there then do it uh, old town also i think on their page on the website shows that you can put a fish catch tray like a measure board over here that it fits inside here perfectly uh, i haven't got my fish tray to fit inside there but uh, i do put the tray right here which I have back here. Let's pull this guy out. So what I do is I put it right there and then I just lay it down. So it doesn't fit perfectly. This is a 32 inch board, but uh, it, it, I mean, it does the job, it gets it done. So you can store it right there as well if you don't wanna put it back over there. Now, moving back a little bit further, right here is the kill switch. So this has got a cord that's tethered around your leg, your foot. I would recommend your ankle or maybe your life vest. But uh, either way, once you engage that and then that kill switch is engaged, the juice is being sent to the trolling motor, so you're going to be good to go. Now, you got carry handles midway through the boat on both sides. Again, just like the carry handle up there at the bow, these guys are just darn near bulletproof. They are very tough and durable. I've never really had a need to grab the boat from these carry handles. I mean, unless you're gonna scooch it along, then you can do that. Um, but yeah, right here, you got a little bitty tray. I normally put hooks or something like that in there, maybe some soft crappie plastics that I use out there in a salt a lot. Uh, I'll just store those there. You got a cup holder here, a cup holder on the opposite side right there. Normally I just keep my Procure over here. Um, I don't really like these cup holders. Main reason why is they never ever drain. It would be nice to have seen like a slit inside the mold or something so that when water goes in it drains out. Once these guys get filled with water you, you need to get a rag or something like that to empty them out. It's just really nasty. I use this as my line keeper and uh, like used plastics, so it's my trash can. But uh, it's good to know that you've got one if you need it. We move back and now you're to the seat. Very comfortable seat with plenty of like holes in it so that you can get a good breeze, especially out here in the Texas area. Uh, in the south, it is hot. And when you get a breeze, you want that thing to get your back and uh, underneath your bottom parts so that they can breathe and it's not going to be festering and sweaty but a very comfortable seat all day comfort very simple you got a strap here a strap there 
and you basically let some out. You can recline, you bring some in, you're sitting back up. You have two seating positions. I like to use the high unless we have some sporty conditions out there on the water. So here's the high seating position right there. There's the low so it drops you a few inches down. Now, um, I definitely recommend going on the low position whenever you don't feel comfortable, if you feel a bit tippy until you get your sea legs, start out on the low position and then work your way up to the high position and it's going to be great. If you are on the low position, just know that depending on how heavy you are, if you're down there on the low position, this seat, the battery box is right here. Well, yep, your bottom is going to be hitting the battery box and that's a bit uncomfortable, which is the main reason why I always sit on the high seating position. Another thing to note is that on the low position, you cannot fit three tackle trays. So only two of them are going to be able to fit. So that's just something to make a mental note of. All right now, right here is the battery box. Whatever power source you decide to use, Old Town provides you with this box right here and um, you just basically plug it's got a quick disconnect plug right there and it plugs into your power source so every autopilot and then the mina the mina the Minn Kota 106 uh, comes with the battery box and it just plugs right here there's pre-wiring done all the way over there for a seamless and very tasty looking uh, what do you call it? Trolling motor setup. All right, now we move over here. You've got in-hole access. Again, I don't know what you're gonna store down there, but if you can think of it, then more power to you. I use it to just basically access wiring and stuff like that. Uh, you could possibly put a battery down here and then just like, I mean, my battery probably would fit in there. Yeah, it'll fit. But uh, why would you want to do that? I don't know. Uh, especially whenever you have a battery box right there. But uh, in-hole access and this never ever leaks. Uh, it's just a great hatch. Old Town, if you ask me, makes some of the best hatches that are out there on the market that do what they're supposed to do. They keep water out and they seal everything off, else off. So that's a lockable one. And then you go to the other side, you have this dry box that they provide you. I keep my leader line and uh, some of the other things. Uh, this goes inside there just so that I never ever forget it. And uh, you've got a rubber seal or foam seal right there that locks down and then you lock it. A little bit of bungee to put some stuff there if you need to. Uh, really great hatch. If you don't want something getting wet, you can put it in there. I've never had an issue with it. Keep stuff dry. Now, coming over here, you have your rudder deployment. So that is rudder up. You go that way, and now your rudder down. So go back, rudder up. So very nice and easy to deploy your rudder. Over here on the other side, you've got your paddle holder. Now this is a really good paddle holder too. Uh, it actually, you clip it in there and then you've got this to lock it on. So nice. It's easy. It's uh, easily accessible, but it keeps it out of the way. So we go into the tank well. Oh my lord. Look at everything that I have inside there. There's a good shot right there from that angle. We go back over here. I mean, I've just got everything in there. It is one of the biggest tank wells that I have ever seen. You can put a pretty big size ice chest on this thing and have room still to spare. Uh, let's move my ice, my fish bag out of the way. Right here for the kayak, you've got a little plug that goes over there on the uh, trolling motor well. So if you're not using the trolling motor and you wanna just paddle, why would you do that? I don't know, but if you do and you want to do that, you can put that right there to keep water from splashing up in. I'm pretty sure water will go through as hard swells. You go over swells or something, it's just bungee. But I mean, the thought is what matters, I guess. 
but uh, I, on my older autopilot, the 120, I have never ever used that before. But it's there if you need to use it. You've also got scupper holes back here, so if water comes over, it's going to drain rather easily. Right here, flush mount rod holders facing to the rear. I forgot to tell you all about the forward facing flush mount rod holders. You got two and then two. So really nice to have if you don't want to do a crate the way I do. Uh, and then as you start going back, you have two more gear tracks, same size as the ones in the front. You get it on the left and the right hand side. Plenty of space to put all your accessories. We continue going to the rear of the kayak and back here you have a shallow water mounting system on the left hand side of the boat. I wished Old Town would have did it to both sides. Uh, give us the option like, you know, you have a mount there if you cast with your left hand, well then you don't want your power pole on the left hand side. You want it on the right so you get more leverage through your cast. I just wish they would have did that. It's something that I asked for. Hopefully in future models they will give it to us. And then the last bit is over here. Uh, underneath right here is your carry handle. Uh, it's built into the kayak itself. Um, kudos to Old Town for finally putting one on each side so that you can actually carry. However, I still think kind of like a design flaw having the rudder way out here just jabs you and especially if you have the shallow water anchor mounted on um, and you're trying to carry this it gets in the way of your wrist so you have to wait and mount that or you basically take out the pole and then now you can carry it but you still have this stabbing your private parts depending on how tall you are or short you are if you're too short, it's going to get your belly. Now, the last feature of the boat is the extra large rudder. This guy has got so much surface area. It is big in comparison to their older, like, topwater models. You get a lot more surface area to push water in and out of the way. So that right there definitely helps you out whenever you want to turn in a tight spot. And coupled with the turning of the trolling motor so you got that and then you got this turning well now you get to see why i say it turns on a dime alrighty so that is it right there in a nutshell all the features of the old town sportsman autopilot 136 it is a 13 and a half foot long boat 37 inches wide you've got uh, i think the weight of it fully assembled is 134 pounds by far the heaviest boat but I am willing to live with that because I only portage it just from the garage to the truck and then from the truck to the launch, wherever it is that I'm going to be launching. The distance is very minimal, but once it gets on the water, boy, does it shine and you'll see what I'm saying about it being such a spectacular platform to fish from. Definitely worth the hassle on land because when you get on the water, it is an absolute dream. Uh, the capacity is like 600 plus pounds. And then the usable capacity is down to like 500 pounds. So definitely something worth getting. So that is going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. If you're someone that's new to the channel and you only found your way here because of the 136 and you want to know a little bit more about it, do me a favor. Please consider subscribing. Go over to my channel, watch a couple of my other videos on its little brother, the Autopilot 120. And if you enjoy those, then like seriously, hit that subscribe button because there's going to be a lot more content coming from this platform here. And uh, we're going to test it out inside the shallow water marshes of Texas, some open water stuff out there in the bay, and then a little bit of deeper water stuff going beyond the breakers on the coast itself so more to come thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed this one don't forget to click that thumbs up button and until next time tight lines y'all